This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories, and welcome to my review of the Star Wars stories. And with this, I'll be reviewing both Solo and Rogue One. And I'll look at them in chronological order, and not in release order. And with it, I will have obviously spoilers for this. But Solo came out in like, I think like 2018. So there's been a good amount of years since it came out. But yeah, I'm going to go straight into it. And overall, Solo is a really good film. Although, in my opinion, it has also the worst moment in any Star Wars movie. And... I'll I'll include that at end shows and probably books or comics. Probably the worst line in multiple well, lines in the history of all of Star Wars, and that is how Han Solo got his name. And honestly, this moment was just such a terrible moment. And nothing not even the lines of somehow Palpatine returned, Ray Skywalker, or a few other ones get even close to just how bad of a moment this was. And the only other moment I think that could even be close to this is how Nick Fury lost his eye in Captain Marvel. But not even that, at least in my opinion, could rank up to this. Because it just answered a question that nobody ever need answered with this. And that was, how did Han Solo get his last name? And with it, I am actually interested in this film when I watched it and... I was fine with seeing Han Solo's backstory and everything. And don't mind too much that a lot of it just happened within this short period of time. But the one thing I cannot ever forgive is in the line of how Han Solo got his name. It was just some random Imperial giving it to him because he says he lived on his own. That was just such a dumb line and was so terrible and I honestly think that they just went and could have nearly ruined the character just with that line and it's completely infuriating and I can't believe this ever made it past the storyboard stage and can't believe someone didn't lose their job for even suggesting this. But yeah, besides that completely horrible scene, this is overall a really fun movie. And it's not, you know, the greatest film ever. But it's still a really fun crime film where they're just tempted to do a heist. And that's just really it. I don't have too much negative to say about it besides just really that one line from the movie where he gets his name, as I said. But looking at the positives, we have the beginning of the relationship between Han Solo and Chewbacca, which is a really nice moment. There is also him meeting Lando, which was fun to see. Tobias Beckett was a really interesting character to have in there. And also seeing not only the Kessel Run and just so much more in here. And with it, although it could have been better as a series where these things happen over maybe the events of 
a few years and not just mainly a few days. I still think that the story is overall really interesting and introducing Crimson Dawn was really fun. And yeah, with it, I don't have too much to complain about it. I also love the reveal with Darth Maul in it. And this is something I remember going to see this opening weekend with my friends, and they were able to predict that Maul was going to be in the movie. Not based off of uh, spoilers or anything, but just off of a um, random guess, and I remember just them talking about it after, and they said it out loud in their own theater, just talking to each other. And I was a little surprised it turned out to be right, but it was really cool to see them all there. And yeah, it makes a lot of sense now with him wanting to be a crime boss. And it's continuation to stuff like Crimson Empire and War of the Bounty Hunters is interesting. Or it's Crimson Reign, I think. Crimson Empire, I think, is just another Legends comic. Yeah, I am planning to read Crimson Rain. I think I have all the comics in it now. And I just need to go and read them. And I'll set that up for the final one. I may have a review of that soon, but I'm not sure. Yeah, moving back to Solo. Although, the young Han Solo actor and, well, the young Lando actor are not as good as Harrison Ford and Billy D. Williams. I still think they did have a good job in the role. And even though I would prefer to have a film with Harrison Ford and Billy D. Williams being in it, I still think that the film was good and I don't think that they have to go on a method where they never have to recast ever again. Because I think that one of the main problems with this film was not really what was going on with it. And I think the main problem people had was mainly with The Last Jedi and all the demands to boycott it because of that film. And with it, I could definitely understand why some people would not want to see it. Although I did watch a movie because I want to give each Star Wars film itself its own individual chance and not base it off of either how good or how bad a previous film was. And I was pleasantly surprised by Solo, both when I watched it in theaters and still enjoy to watch it now. That's a really fun and unique movie. And honestly, that's really all I have to say about it. Moving on now to Rogue One, which I think is the best film in Star Wars canon. And the second darkest film to be in Star Wars. And with that, I just have to put Revenge of the Sith over it. Because as I mentioned yesterday, it's still really dark what happens in front of the Sith and the full genocide of the Jedi Order. I think is a lot darker than, well, spoiler, but this film's been out for years. Everyone dying of the heroes in the end. And yeah, with that, although the films are pretty close in how dark they are, I still really enjoy Rogue One. And I'd still rank it pretty high among Star Wars films. And with it, it'd probably be just under the big films that I mentioned yesterday that are all kind of tied, which is episodes 3 through 6. And with it, I'd probably rank it over the first two prequel films. And definitely put it over all of the sequel films and Solo. And yeah, I think that with it, it has a really interesting story. And some pretty interesting villains. And director Chronic serves as a 
some different and unique villain in it. With him not being someone as cool or collective as Tarkin. And not as dark and threatening as Vader. You can see pretty well through him and see how he is. Just a guy desperate to keep his power. And do what will keep him in power. And with it, it's pretty clear he is going to be crossing some lines to go and just become more powerful. But with it, I think that it still is interesting to see just what lengths he will go to. But with it, the main draw is the cast of different heroes who team up to ultimately steal the Death Star plans. And with it, there is multiple different characters. You get Jin Erso, who serves as the main character of the story. And with her, she leads to the ultimate sacrifice. And with it, we have Cassian Andor. It was a pretty interesting character and will be the main character of the Andor show, which I'm really excited to see come out in about a month and a half. And with it, there's just so much more that will be interesting to talk about. We have fun characters like Chirrut and Baze Melvis and some other ones like Bodhi Rook are not as fun, but still interesting. And with it, there's just some really cool but dark moments that happen. And as I was saying, we have all the characters die in the end, giving the ultimate sacrifice before they go and even know this will even succeed. With only two having even a slight idea that the plan could have worked out is Jin and Castian, since the rest die before the Death Star plans are even transmitted. And with it, that's probably one of the most impressive parts is they went and killed everyone off. And although a lot of people were thinking, including me, that they would probably all die going in. I wasn't sure if, you know, Disney and Lucasfilm would actually go and pull that off. And it was a really cool moment to see, and well, there's just so many other great moments throughout this. It was cool to see Saw Greer appear here, although he was killed off pretty quickly. And with it, when I originally went in, I didn't recognize him from Clone Wars. But after going back, I did realize that they were the same person, and I really appreciate how his story has been developed upon from Clone Wars into Rebels, and into Rogue One. He also appeared briefly in Bad Batch, and there's just some other interesting stuff happening with him in Andor, although... We don't know what it will be yet. Yeah, I'm really excited to see just how this continues into Andor with both Saw Gerrera and Andor being developed to both had some pretty good roles in this film, although Cassian had a lot bigger role. And it was just funny to see Saw killed off so quickly. But one of the coolest things introduced in this film was Vader's castle on Mustafar, which is definitely one of the coolest things to be in canon. And the other cool thing is the extremely famous Darth Vader hallway scene. And with it, it's just a first real time outside of you know some comics, games, and shows that you really got to see. Vader fully unleashed. Because with it, there was some stuff like Vader appearing in 
one of the Star Wars issues. It was the first crossover between the Star Wars and Darth Vader comics. Where he went and murdered an entire army full of rebels. But within canon, I can't think of much more besides that before Rogue One. That showed Vader fully unleashed. And with it, it was still really interesting to see just everything that Vader did and how powerful he was in this and how helpful it is to go up against him. But yeah, looking at it, Rogue One's just such a great film overall. It ties in really well to the beginning of A New Hope. And I really do love the film overall and I do want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. I'll see you all in the next episode of Legends and Theories. Thank you for watching this episode of Legends and Theories. Please subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave a comment, check out the video on screen, and may the force be with you.